All right, we are joining this game in progress. We are in the bottom of top, sorry, top of the second inning. This is the Phoenix Sushias at the plate. They are going up against the Palm Spring Stingers. We'll get the score updated for you here in a little bit. We are bringing this game to you on tape delay. With me in the broadcast booth is Joel Tremblay. And I'm Roman Jimenez. Hi, Joel. Hi, Roman. How are you doing? I'm well. This is the 2019 Autumn Classic Softball Tournament. We are here in beautiful San Diego on a beautiful day. And we're just a game away from the championship feeder game. So the 2 o'clock game will be the championship feeder. So the winner of this game will play the winner of the winner's bracket. The winner of the, loser, the loser of the winner bracket final. We'll figure all of that out in a little bit. We'll be talking about if games soon enough. Right. Ground ball shortstop. That's Clark over to get the out at second. And then the return throw over to first is good enough to get Delgado. And that is out number three. So Ochoa was out on the throw. Granada was out on the return. Sorry, that was Delgado out on the turn. So that is three outs. That'll bring up the Palm Spring Stingers here later. In the meantime, we'll get a score check for you. You want to run through the lineups and tell everybody who's here? Sure, yeah. The board says 0-0, but it doesn't look like they're using the board today, Roman. It says like, 50 minutes on it. So we have for the Stingers, uh, first hitter is number 10, Zach Douglas. Number 15, John Clark is batting second. Number 13, Carlos Trujillo is batting third. Batting cleanup is number 11, Jason Bradshaw Lopez. Uh, then Corey Jacobs, number 33. In the sixth hole is David Moreno, number 50. Followed by double zero, Justin Bliss. Number two, Gary Compton. Number 21, Stephen Gomes. 14, uh, Ed Goyo. And ending the lineup is number five, J.P. Hidalgo for the Stingers. So this is the Stingers coming up. That's zero, zero, Justin Bliss. Here in the bottom of the second inning. We are told that the score is two to one. And it's two for Palm Springs Stingers. That's the team that's up right now. And one for Phoenix Sushis. We'll get that updated on the screen here for you in a little bit. So it is two to one right now. Palm Springs Stingers are ahead. There's a ground ball in the 5.5 hole. And Bliss is aboard. So this should be Compton, number two. Gary Compton. Looks like they swapped in a uh, courtesy runner there, I think, on the first base. It's over to the right side. Courtesy runner is going to round second and head to third, cutting that bag nicely. So he'll be over at third. Compton will be aboard at first on a little poke into right field. The pitcher is Delgado for the Phoenix Sushis. That'll bring up number 21, Stephen Gomes, with runners at the corners and nobody out. Ground ball, second base. Up with it. Could be two. Over to shortstop for one. Safe at one. Bliss is in on the score. That'll make it three to one. Compton is forced out at first. Gomes is safe at uh, forced out at second. Gomes is safe at first, and that'll bring up Ed. Wheel, Guile? How do you say that last name? I am not sure. I was going with Wheel, but... Wheel? Sure. It's G-U-I-O-L. Whoever he was, in no time at all, he put a liner right up the middle, right and uh, middle. we have first and second again. So Dr. Joel Trampley will take over the play-by-play -play duties here. So we have the bottom of the order, J.P. Hidalgo up here. And it's a fly ball to left field. Getting under it. No, it's uh, left center. Hard, hard, hard play. Gets it right back in there. And now we have the bases loaded with the top of the lineup. Zach Douglas coming up, number 10. Zach is maybe their most reliable bat. 
Aaron Maya, the coach for this Phoenix Sushis team, came a long way over from left center to get that. I'm not sure if that was his ball or if the left fielder was playing deep enough that Aaron had to try to cut it off. Did all he could to bring in the catch, slid down to his knees, but couldn't, ultimately couldn't corral it. So that was a grounder just over the first baseman. It looks like it did not hit the runner. If it did, it was after it was touched by the first baseman. So everybody is safe, and a run is in. And uh, number 15, John Clark, the number two hitter, will be coming up to bat again with the bases loaded. Uh, this is C baseball, so you are allowed to hit a home run. And if you can do it on demand, this would probably be the time. Well, John has good power to the alleys, but I don't know that he's going to be hitting it over the fence anytime soon. The lefty is known mostly for hitting cross field, so they are playing him straight up, which is the right way to play him. And that's a grounder to second after a called strike. They get the out at second, run scores, and that's it for that play. So that is a fielder's choice for Clark, and Douglas is out on the fielder's choice, and we have runners at the corners with two down now. And this is Trujillo at the plate, their number three hitter. Uh, Trujillo has some power. As you might guess from the arms. <laughs> Uh, that's a high fly ball into right field, not going to make the fence. Diving attempt, it was just in between them. Right fielder's getting the ball back in. Clark and is in the score. Here comes Carlos. Nobody home. And Trujillo makes it all the way around. And that is, I believe, four in in the inning, five in in the inning, Roman. I'm showing five, yeah. So. If the score we were given when we went on the air is correct, it is seven. And we'll update all of this on the scorebook a little bit. It is seven to one. And now the cleanup hitter, Bradshaw Lopez, pitch down the middle, high fly ball, deep to right center. Inside the park, bounces off the screen. Coming back in, rounding second, going into third. Looks like he's gonna have a stand-up triple. And that will be Corey Jacobs, number 33, the number five hitter coming to the plate. And it looks like the Stingers might not be done yet. Called strike on the outside corner. Hard line shot. That's fair. That'll get the run in. And that is probably your most classic softball hit. Just a little liner over the infield, good for a single and an RBI. And uh, with Moreno coming to the plate, the Stingers will have batted around this inning with six runs in so far and two out. And another called strike looks like the outside corner. He's uh, painting that pretty well. Jacobs at first, Moreno at the plate, pitch. Grounder to short, tough hop, gets into the outfield. Rounding second, going to third is Jacobs. And we got runners at the corners again, everybody's safe. And Justin Bliss, double zero, will be coming up for his second and bat in the inning. Got a lot of zeros here at the plate. The, the hitter and the catcher are both double zero. This is about as good of a second inning as you could hope for as they batted around and still they've got the two outs. And now it's uh, one ball and one strike, so that's a two and two count now. We start the count with one and one. Everybody starts with a ball and a strike. So he's got one of each and it's two two now. Oh, oh a liner just past the shortstop. Jacobs is coming in from third. Everybody else is stopping, so we got first and second now. And I show that that's seven runs in now. It's nine to one, Palm Springs. Nine to one, Palm Springs. And for those of you keeping track at home, the Houston Texans have upset the Kansas City Chiefs 31-24. Foul ball to the left. 
And for those of you who uh, attend the World Series, you might notice here we start with the one on one count. We do not have a foul to give. So if you are eleven, so one it's in, eleven to one. If you are one and two or two and two, and you hit a foul ball, you are out here at the Autumn Classic. This is Compton at the plate. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I'm gonna. Mitch is gonna kill me. It's nine to one. It is nine. Mitch is gonna kill me. He's not gonna kill me because I got him a diet coke earlier. But I imagine that 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 that, has, that could will his worn off now. Inside pitch to Compton, a ball. Ball on the outside, three and one to Compton. Runners on first and second, two down. Right up the middle, nobody's going to get that one. Coming around to score is Moreno. And still first and second with two down. Another run in. And this will be Gomes at the plate. Lefty sends one out. And right fielder catches it in fair in foul territory for the third out. And I have that as Roman did eight in the inning. So I counted seven. I counted seven in that inning. Uh, I had Bliss score Gomes, Wheel. Clark, Trujillo, Bradshaw, Jacobs. I be, I have Moreno also coming around to score. Okay. So we'll check that with the umpires and get back to you. Uh, but now we are going to have Phoenix coming up in the top of the third inning with uh, pitcher Raydell got. Uh, no, actually, leading off this inning is going to be Austin McClanahan, the extra hitter. First pitch is a ball. Two and one count. And a nice smack down the line in left field. Easing into first with a single is McClanahan. That'll bring up the catcher, RJ Byers. Just inside. Pitcher wanted that one. Hard hit ball to second. Over the shortstop's head. Goes all the way into foul territory. Uh, there was a courtesy runner brought in from McClanahan, so that is number three Mayo running for him, who is now at third, and Byers is at second on the overthrow. So second and third, nobody down, and right center fielder Florio coming to the plate. Pops it into foul territory, catch made. One down, still second and third. Number 19, Jake Bowers coming to the plate, the right fielder. Little pop fly on the infield. Caught by the first baseman, two down. And the number 11 batter, number 11, Rich Reed coming up. Two down with runners on second and third. Pitch hits the plate for a ball. Anytime the ball hits the plate, it is going to be called a ball. Looks like the stinger or the singer's manager wants to come out and have a chat with the pitcher. We got a little time out here. No pitching change made, just probably a little bird, word about where to throw it. Candlesticks. Now the catcher's coming out. 
were talking about candlesticks. Candlesticks? Yeah, what to bring to a wedding. What kind of wedding oh, gift? Num number 11? <laughs> Not sure what's going on here. <laughs> Looks like somehow we're calling that the end of the inning. Not sure what happened there. Those of you who are longtime softball fans will recognize the coach of this Palm Springs team, Whitey Whitehurst. He had a dynasty of a team up in Long Beach called the Outlaws. And the when he retired from his job, he moved out to Palm Springs and then took over this Stingers team, which was started by my good friend, C.J. Tobe. And then he had to uh, focus on some work stuff and uh, a year or so later Whitey Whitehurst was already out in Palm Springs took things over. We're going to try to figure out what happened there. I only record two outs Rome and I wonder if the only thing I can imagine is maybe somebody batted out of order. That's the only thing that I can imagine would have been an automatic out right there. There was nobody who would run that it could have been a appeal for leaving the bag early. That's a long fly to center field nicely caught by the right center fielder and that's one down. Aaron Maya ranging almost all the way to the warning track there. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. There was no argument, though, from uh, from the Phoenix team. They seemed to all be in agreement with whatever that was. Yeah, Phoenix came out and took the field. and So bottom of three, one down. Hidalgo at the plate, number five. Hard hit ball to the shortstop. Just gets passed into left field. That's going to put Hidalgo at first base with the top of the lineup, Zach Douglas, coming to the plate. <laughs> and the pitch to Douglas, just outside. Fly ball to right field, just lands fair. Right fielder couldn't quite get to it. Now we got first and second. As Roman mentioned earlier, it's a beautiful day out here today. It was a nice day yesterday. Um, the fields here are all natural. The infield's probably running a little fast because it hasn't rained here in San Diego in a little while. Number two batter takes the ball deep and inside. This is John Clark up with first and second. That one catches the inside corner for a strike. Clark a lefty. Right fielder is well near the line. Hard hit ball. Nice play by the second baseman. The out at two, and that's the only one they're going to get. Throw to third, actually, not to first. And they get the tag play on the runner sliding in. That's a double play. And that's the end of the third inning. Not your typical fielder's choice or double play on the hard hit ball to second, but they get the force out at second and they throw to third for the tag and get it. That is going to bring up Phoenix. And again, we're still not sure what happened with the lineup at the end of that last inning, but assuming that Rich Reed was the was considered the out at the end of the inning, it's going to be the top of the order with number three, the left center fielder Mayo, coming up to bat. Actually, Roman, I think I know what happened what in that happened? inning. Mayo was on the bases as a courtesy runner when he was oh. up at bat, or when he would have been up at bat. So I that think that may it. have been what happened there. That explains it. Did I mention that my Texans beat the Chiefs today? Yes, you did mention that. Uh, did I mention that? Okay. So actually it is number 13 who is up to bat. I wanted to point that out. And I'm also losing in my fantasy room. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't do fantasy anymore. It takes too much time. Oh, fair ball right down the line.
That is Hernandez. And I will one-up you, Roman, or not one-up you, but I think, I was like, okay, well, if Mayo was out, then what happened to Reed? They intentionally walked Reed to get to Mayo to make him the out. That is a smart manager on that sideline. That is Whitey Whitehurst earning his keep over there. Because once he's out there, you cannot substitute for him. You can't put somebody else out there to avoid that. That's the risk you run. Now, I understand why Aaron was running for him. He is crazy fast and a very smart base runner. They just kind of got caught there. Just missed. Roman and I both coach at different times, and I think we've both been there when we know who we'd like to put in, but you have to worry about when they're going to be coming to the plate, even if they're the fastest guy on your bench. And that's a, and that's a relatively, I mean, that's not a new rule, but it's, it's definitely something that has come into play more now that you can have a courtesy runner every inning. It used to be you had to designate what, who that runner was going to be. Ball just past first base and into right field. Runner coming around third, coming home. Not going to be a play. He's going to score. That's Hernandez scoring. And Ochoa is at first with one down. This game is brought to you by Compete Sports Diversity, the global leader in sports diversity and home to the annual PD Awards. Visit CompeteSportsDiversity.com. And that is a ball inside to number eight, the shortstop, Ray Granado. I like how we made those shorter now. <laughs> And that's a strike. The next ad read is going to be a lot longer, so I'm going to have to wait till the next half minute. <laughs> <laughs> but we love just, our sponsors here. Just over the shortstop's head. Uh, not exactly the classic Baltimore chop, but bounced really early and just lined it right over there. So we got first and second now with uh, another Ray, Ray Delgado, the pitcher, coming to the plate. <laughs> Pitch hits the plate, two and one. All right, okay, if that was our, your friends, who, who And there's a strike right down the pipe. <laughs> oh, what a play by Clark, ranging all the way over to his right to get that. Showing the range. I thought that was in the 5.5 hole and into left field. That was a nice play. So we've got Granado at second and Delgado at first. Ochoa out on the fielder's choice. And number 22, Austin McClanahan coming to the plate. Ball inside, two and one. Little grounder to the first baseman, fields it cleanly, walks to the bag, that's three down. And I have uh, Hernandez coming in to score, so one run for Phoenix that inning. And the next pitch is brought to you by Landform Fitness. They're a group of fitness professionals who focus on supporting clients wherever they are in their fitness journey. Whether you're just starting out or leaning down for a fitness competition. Affordable group classes or private sessions are available, and if you're not in San Diego, no problem. Online coaching is available too. They'll create a personalized fitness strategy just for you. Landform Fitness, more than a gym, it's a fitness solution. Landformfitness.com. So we are in the bottom of the fourth inning with the Stingers coming to the plate. Who's coming up? I believe it is uh, the number three hitter, uh, Carlos Trujillo. So heart of the order coming up here for the Stingers. So that'll be Trujillo, Bradshaw, and Jacobs. And that lineup is brought to you by Metropolitan Community Church of San Diego, a VIP faith community, vibrant, inclusive, and progressive. To find your faith team, visit themetchurch.org. It's another short one. <laughs> And it looks like they're trying to get the scoreboard going. Grounder to second, nice throw, easy play, one down. That was a hard hit ball. Trujillo had that home run earlier, so he kind of wants to go to that right side just naturally. That's where his swing is. And it looked like this time the second baseman was ready for it. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
And that is ball two to Bradshaw Lopez. That was Sergio Diaz at second base, by the way, making that stop. You didn't take a ball. And ball comes up short of the plate, three and one. Taken all the way and getting ball four inside was Bradshaw Lopez. So we're going to have a runner on first for Corey Jacobs. Corey Jacobs has all kinds of power. So be on the lookout for that. The outfield seems to be aware of it. As everybody on the left side is playing just a step or two in from the warning track, everybody on the right side is just about 10 or maybe, maybe I'd say eight steps in from the warning track on the right side. And first pitch down the middle. Hard shot down the left field line. That is fair ball. Here comes the throw, and it's not going to be in time as runners advance to second and third. Jacobs at second, Bradshaw at third, one out. And coming to the plate is David Moreno, number 50. He hit one through the shortstop last time. And the ball. Come up short, three and one. But pitcher does have first base open. Ball four. Bases are going to be loaded for Justin Bliss. That's one with the two guys. And <laughs> Bliss batted twice in the last inning. Sort of over to shortstop and to left center both times. Oh, missed that. Swinging strike. Don't see that every day in C. Nargles. I blame the Nargles. <laughs> blame the Nargles. Tries to go after him outside, gives him a swing and a bad pitch, but it's called a ball, so the count's going to be two and two. Bliz with a fly ball into right center, caught by the right center fielder. And the runner from third, third scores, Jason Bradshaw Lopez. Corey Jacobs moves over to third. And Moreno stays at first on the sacrifice fly by Bliss. That brings Compton number two to the plate. And that run home is brought to you by Chase Regazzi, your one-stop San Diego realtor. Specializing in real estate, mortgage, and financial services, run to your new home with Chase Regazzi. Contact him at chaseregazzi.com. Runners at the corners with two down, grounded to third base from Compton. They get the out at second, and that's three down. The run does not score, so that's... I believe just one in the inning. Yeah. Ten to one is the score. I, let's see. That should be, I think that's 11 for the Stingers and two because they got one in the fourth inning there for Phoenix. And this should be the top of, top of five. Top of five, Phoenix come to the plate with their number seven... Number eight hitter, Byers. Double zeros. Eleven one. Eleven one. Part of doing these games as we bring them to you is that we get to kind of sit on whatever we can find to sit on, and I just about fell off the picnic table. <laughs> One of my more athletic moves. So we are in the fifth inning. These games will go seven innings if there's time, but we do have oh. a clock going. That is a long oh. drive to right field. Hits the wall. Good play by the right fielder to get it in fast. Going to hold him to a double. So a stand-up double for R.J. Byers, and that'll bring Florida to the plate with a chance to drive in a run. Oh, he hit that ball a ton, didn't he? He did. That was only a few a few feet shy of going out, but probably happy about that because you want to save those home runs for when you have runners on base. And, you know, it does sound like a lot. 11-1 to one is a big advantage, and it is, but it is not in softball. Remember, nine of those runs for the Stingers were scored in one inning, and certainly this Phoenix Susias uh, has the ability to score that many as well. And after the deep fly, a little looper, a uh, nice base hit, but unfortunately, Byers had to wait to see if it was going to be caught, so he only gets it to third. So runners on the corners for Bowers. 
Pops that one up, does Bowers. It could be caught by Clark, and it is. Great range on the shortstop. I've had the pleasure of playing with John Clark behind me as a pitcher, and, and uh, he is a, for the tournament I picked him up in, we uh, played in Phoenix, he played, or uh, we played in Vegas, he played second base for me with uh, Shiggy Yamada as my shortstop, so it was a pretty good infield pretty combination. Pretty good, I've <laughs> known Shiggy for a long time, and he's a great shortstop as well, that's a nice, those are a couple nice guys to have up in your middle infield when you're pitching, I'd take that any day. Another oh. rip to right center. Oh, over, oh, the head of over his head. The liner didn't sink. There's two. So oh, Byers coming in. Florio coming in. And that is going up. Oh, no, Florio not come in. So Byers comes in. Florio is to third on a stand up double by number 11, Rich Reed. And now the top of the order, Mayo coming up. And Mayo, ha Maya, Aaron Maya has all kinds of power. He can, he can hit that ball over the fence, hit the base of the fence. I've thrown pitches to him that still haven't landed. That's a grounder to second. Up oh, too hard. Oh, tough hop, tough hop. So Florio is going to score on that one. Reed is going to go to third, and Maya is at first base on the hard hit ball to second. Yeah, that ball was, was well hit. It was hit on the screws. And I think it just took that kind of tricky hop, and I think the second baseman's glove closed just right before he got into it. Just a little bit. So this is Hernandez coming to the plate. That's ticketed for the outfield, and it's going to get past Douglas. It's past Douglas. There's another run coming in. Here comes Maya. He's going to hold. So huh. Reed scores, and Maya to third. And how many is that now? We cut the lead is, in half. That is three in the inning, and Hernandez is going into second with a double. That ball just died. It was a great attempt by the left center fielder trying to get there. Yeah, but it just took a nosedive. And, you know, something we love as coaches, uh, did not get as far as it might have because that left fielder was over there up. to back up. So good play by the left fielder to keep that one from being a bigger problem than it was. We got a foul ball over the fence. A couple uh, fans uh, bounce it in. Nobody catches it in their beer, despite a golden opportunity to put Paul, it in a cup. Paul Marthaler down there decided not to go for the go for the beer catch. I'm going to say we're a little disappointed, Paul. So this is Diaz now, one and two. Grounder to shortstop. Gonna, only forces it one. Nice play. They try to get the out at home. Maya not gets in time. There. It was a great throw and a good run from Maya. He hesitated just long enough to take off, but a strong throw from Clark and then a strong throw from the first baseman. And a lot of times the first baseman that you'll see and see don't have that kind of an arm, uh, but he made a good, solid, strong throw just a little bit up the line. Ochoa grounds one to third. No force at third. Throws across to first. Gets the, gets the out. So four come in, right? And four come in in the inning. Cuts the lead in half. And so now we're going to have bottom five with number 21, Stephen Gomes, coming up. Mitch. Your family's history is more than a DNA test. Learn how to uncover yours with the Amazon bestseller, Forever Legacy Book, an interactive workbook that walks you through how to interview loved ones to preserve their stories and legacy. Hold on to your history. Order your Forever Legacy Book on Amazon today or visit foreverlegacybook.com. I love that idea. It's an interactive workbook. It teaches you how to kind of talk to your relatives about Tell me your story. Tell me your history. Tell us this family history so we can keep that alive. And, and then it kind of tells you how to document it. I love that. That's great. So Gomes, a lefty, takes a pitch inside for ball two. See if Singers can get some of that lead back. Ball got by the pitcher, a little delay as he runs out to get it. None of his infielders help him. Nobody seemed to want to. Yeah. Nobody was they got to hang him out to dry there. Like, hey, wait a minute. No, the infielders are playing deep here. I don't care. I'd still make Shiggy go get it. <laughs> Shiggy, Bill Moore, go, go after that, please. Three and one to Gomes. 
Just outside, outside ball four. Just missed. And that's going to bring Ed to the plate. They have a lot of left-handed batters on this team. And a pinch runner out there at first. They've got this one, and then John Clark is a switch hitter. He can bat from either side of the plate. He prefers that left side. I've never been able to do that. <laughs> oh, great stop by the first baseman. Oh, well, a he, strong oh, throw to second, but hits the runner in the back. We'll see if he's okay. It looks like he's doing okay. I think there was a miscommunication. You are supposed to tag the runner in that instance, but I don't think you're supposed to tag him with the ball before he gets to a fielder. <laughs> And this is not kickball for those of you play. <laughs> uh, being hit with a thrown ball does not make you out. But that's one down and a runner at second for Hidalgo, the bottom of the lineup. That one's going to get through the 5.5 hole. And go all the way to the fence. Here comes Gomes. Speaking of kickball, we'll tell you about kickball here in the next half inning. And Hidalgo into second. That's going to roll the lineup. And Douglas, the number one hitter, is at the plate. Zach Douglas, who has since moved from Palm Springs but still plays with this Dinger team. Lived in Palm Springs for a very long time and has moved away now. Ball almost hits the on-deck hitter. I think he might be gunning for right field, Roman. Up the middle or to the right, that's where he goes. And there we go. Nice little single drops in. Hidalgo to third. And that'll bring Clark to the plate. Now with a runner at first and third, we'll see if he goes up lefty or righty. He's going to go lefty. Looks like his Oh, past the second baseman. And that's going to store Hidalgo. And Douglas to second. So runners on first and second for the number three batter, Trujillo, who hit a home run in his first at bat. And we are coming up close on time. I'm pretty sure we've got less than 10 minutes now. So uh, here in a minute, I'll find out how much time is left. Just inside for ball two. Grounded is short. They go to third for the lead runner, and that's all they're going to get. So 6-5 on the play. Clark to second. Trujillo is at first for the cleanup hitter, uh, number 11, Jason Bradshaw Lopez. And quickly. Over the fence it goes. And that is going to be a three-run home run. So there are four minutes left in this game. And that's going to be ball game on the run roll. And that is five runs in the inning. So if you're the home team and you're up by 10 at the end of five innings, that's the ball game. The mercy or run rules are 10 at five innings, 15 after four innings, or 20 after three innings. And as you watch the hand shaking across the field here, this handshake is brought to you by the California Classic. GayKickball.com presents the California Classic in San Diego, February 21 through the 23rd. Just $50 a player and your team will get free uniforms. Sign up now at GayKickball.com. So our next game up will be between this Palm Springs team, Stingers team <laughs> and the loser of the winner bracket final, which I believe was the Boston crew. We're going to close down our broadcast and restart it up, so click on the next video here on Facebook and YouTube. And for Joel Trampley, Mitch Barnes, I'm Roman Jimenez. Thank you for watching the Cloud Sports Network at the San Diego Autumn Classic.